All right, let's get started with, how about number one? Uh, we're gonna find the vertex uh, of the parabola and determine if it opens up or down. I think the second part is easiest. Uh, the thing that you need to keep in mind is that, and it, it really is so much simpler if, if we've uh, listened to all the discussions about how this function behaves, um, this guy is going to be the, the most important term here. Um, so it's, it's going to be the biggest. As x gets larger, x squared is going to be ginormous compared to 10x or the number 5. Uh, and so how is this term going to act as x gets bigger and bigger? It's going to get small. It's going to get like more and more and more negative because it's multiplied by a negative. Because squaring something will always make it positive. And when you multiply that always positive number by a negative 2, you'll see the, uh, the tendency as x goes towards infinity for the graph to go down, and as x goes towards negative infinity, for again, the graph to be uh, going down for the y values to be negative. So it opens down. Um, what's the, uh, the vertex? I think a preferred method by most people that I'm seeing is negative b over 2a, because we have this propensity for formulas. So here's a formula, negative b over 2a. You gotta remember that this is c, this is b, and this is a because it's a matter of what's with the what's the coefficient of x squared, what's the coefficient of x, and what is the constant. All right, so b is negative 10, so we have negative, negative 10, over 2 times a, which is negative 2. Uh, so we have 10 over negative 4, which is negative 5 halves, okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as a fraction. Negative 5 halves is what? It is the... Uh, x equals negative 5 halves is where the line of symmetry can be found. The line of symmetry is the line where the vertex is. The vertex is somewhere on that line of symmetry, and we'll find the parabola opens down from there. So that's the x value of the vertex. Right, I'll move over to negative 5 halves, and then I'll find my vertex. Right, I'll find the y value of my vertex. Why do, how do I find the y value? How do I find the y value given an x value? In any case, I always just plug the x in, and it gives me the y. So 5 minus 10 times negative 5 halves minus 2 times negative 5 halves squared. Uh, so this is 5. This is going to be plus. This 2 is going to cancel with this 10. It could make it into 5. So it's going to be 5 times 5 is going to be 25. Um, 5 halves squared is going to be 25 over 4. 25 over 4. Let's just make a little note of that. Uh, I'm going to multiply 25 over 4 by negative 2. That's going to cancel with this, make it a 2. So it's going to be negative 25 over 2. All right. So we'll get uh, a common denominator. Uh, so this is 30. Okay, 30. Um, so that's 60 halves minus 25 halves. So that's 35 halves. So there's our vertex, negative 5 halves, comma, 35 halves. And we're moving along. Graph the parabola, label the vertex, line of symmetry. This is in vertex form. Uh, the vertex is quickly at, oh, I'm just going to tell you quickly and then explain, 3, 4, 3, 4. All right. Uh, it's, sorry, 3, negative 4. 3, negative 4. OK. Um, it's going to open up, because this is a positive out here. If I were to multiply it out, there would be a positive in front of the x squared. It's going to open up. And so since I know that's where the vertex is, uh, label the vertex. OK, so I'm going to label the vertex. Uh, vertex is at 3, negative 4. Uh, line of symmetry, that would be this guy right here. And then uh, just plot some points. Um, well, it doesn't really matter. I'll, maybe I'll plug in 1, because it's I like to go 2 away from the line of symmetry as a general practice. So 1 minus 3 squared minus 4, that's going to be negative 2 squared minus 4. That's going to be 4 minus 4. That's going to be 0. So plugging in 1 gives me 0 for y. I should be able to reflect that across the uh, line of symmetry and draw my parabola. All right, so I'm done. I've drawn my parabola. But I want to go back and, like I said, again explain why I know the vertex is at 3, negative 4. Okay. Um, let's remind ourselves, uh, 
maybe we'll just go ahead and assume we know that it opens up. Let's just start there. Um, I'm going to prove to you that negative 4 is the smallest y value I can get. And if it's the smallest y value I can get, that's kind of almost the definition of the vertex. It's like the very bottom, right? The very minimum y value. I'm going to prove to you that negative 4 is the smallest y value you can get out of this function. No smaller than that is possible. Um, well, I'm gonna, I, I can see this function as a negative 4 plus this thing. This thing will always be positive, and so negative 4 plus something is always going to be bigger than negative 4, right? Um, but the, the smallest thing, keep in mind, what I'm, what I'm saying here is I'm always adding something on to negative 4. Always adding something to negative 4. So the smallest thing I could add to negative 4 would be nothing. Right? And that would make it the smallest possible. I can never subtract something from negative 4 in this case, because this will always be positive, because I'm squaring something. No matter what I square, whether it's positive or negative, I'll get a positive. So how will I get 0? Well, I'll get 0 when I put 3 right there. Right? So plugging in 3 for x gives me 0 for this parentheses part, uh, which enables me to find the very smallest possible value, which is negative 4. Anything other than 3 is going to put me give me a slightly positive number or a slightly negative number, which when I square it is going to be some positive that I add to negative 4, and we'll make a y value that is larger than 4. I'm sorry, negative 4. Um, so, I mean, we, we talked about this in a, a lot slower, a lot more detail, um, a lot better explanations. That was like a really fast recap uh, of why this is vertex form. I just wanted to briefly go over that again. Find the maximum or minimum value of the function. Okay, the maximum or minimum value of the function. We know this is a parabola, so if it looks like this, it's got a, like, whatever the y value is, that's the maximum. If it opens up, then it has a minimum. The, the point here is the maximum or the, uh, or sorry, maximum or minimum the value for the function, this value for the function, the value for a function is always the y value functions turn inputs into outputs. So the value of a thing that turns inputs into outputs is the output. The output is the important part of a function. Uh, the input, a little bit boring, whatever. Put whatever you want. The output is what makes a function different from another function. So when I say the maximum or minimum value, I'm looking for the y value. Okay. Where is the y value of the, you know, wh where is that y value, where is that maximum or minimum y value at the vertex? So I need to find the vertex, and the y value of the vertex is my maximum or minimum. Uh, and depending on if it opens down or up, it, it's a maximum or minimum. It opens down, so I can just go ahead and write that the maximum is, what, y equals something. y equals the y value of the vertex. So how will I find the vertex? Negative b over 2a, how about that? Negative b over 2a, uh, that's negative 8 over negative 2, so that's positive 4. So I'll plug 4 into the function, so that's negative 4 squared plus 8 times 4 plus 3. Uh, so we have a negative 16 plus uh, 32 plus 3, so it's going to be 16 plus 3, that's 19. 19 is the maximum. The function in vertex form, okay, that's going to require us to do uh, a few things here. We're going to use completing the square to write this so it looks like this. So first I'm going to take this negative 2, just do a little mathematical move called a scooch, just scooch it over there, um, and kind of separate off these guys here. To make this easier, we always like to have a positive here, so let's factor a negative out of those parentheses. All right, so far, it's exactly the same as it started. But now I'm going to add something here. All right, uh, I'm going to add something so that this factors as two binomials that are identical. And if I want two identical, this is completely squared, two identical uh, factors, uh, where when I multiply them together, I get x squared plus 8x plus something else. Well, they would have to be x plus 4 and x plus 4 identical and gets x squared plus 8x, and now we'll figure out what this guy is. Uh, so this is x plus 4 squared. If I multiply this out, I'll get x squared plus 8x plus 16. All right. Now, this is not the same as it started before. It is not the same as this, because I have this plus 16. This is different. 
but I can't just make it different for no reason at all. I have to balance that out. Um, so what I've done is I have added 16 in here, but this is inside of parentheses that's being multiplied by a negative. So what's this really worth? It's really worth a minus 16 on this right side of the equation. So I need to balance that minus 16 with a plus 16. All right. um, and then I'll have my negative x plus 4 squared minus 2 plus 16. That's going to be plus 14. So the vertex is at negative 4, 14. And you might think, like, this only goes up to 5. How can I graph 14? But I can make the scale of this anything I want. Uh, so let's see. Maybe uh, I can make each of these 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. I can make, make each of these uh, 2, negative 2, negative 4, 2, 4. And this will be negative 3, negative 6, and so on. So negative 4, 14 would look like this, right about there. Okay, uh, And then I need some more points. No problem there. Uh, let's plug in, uh, how about negative 2? I'm just going to plug negative 2 in there. Um, I found the line of symmetry here. I found the vertex here. The vertex is negative 4, 19. Uh, I just need a couple more points. Let's plug in, like I said, let's plug in negative 2. So I could plug it in here. I could plug it in over here. Uh, or, you know, what might be easier is just plug in 0 over here. How about that? Plug in 0 over here, I get negative 2. It makes it really easy, really fast to figure out. But negative 2 is what I get when I plug in 0. I'll reflect that over the line of symmetry and try to draw a nice looking parabola on this computer screen. Decent. Okay. Uh, sketch the graph equation, label the x-intercepts, vertex, and line of symmetry. It does a lot of things. Um, I'm going to start with the x-intercepts. Okay. I know that the x-intercepts on the are on the x-axis. That's when y equals zero. That's why I make y equal to zero. And now I'm just solving this equation, which I can do by factoring. If it's factorable, which it should be. So the, uh, the thing here is um, this times this is 0. So this must be equal to 0, or this must be equal to 0. And so x equals 4. x equals negative 2. Those are my two x-intercepts. OK, so x-intercept, x-intercept. OK, I labeled my x-intercepts. Uh, next. A vertex. Where's the vertex? Negative b over 2a. Negative 2 over 2 times 1. So negative 1. Or sorry. Um, negative b. Oh, sorry. It's negative negative 2. So it's a positive 1. Or I could split these, these x-intercepts down the middle, right? And that will give me my line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. 1 and what? Uh, plug 1 in here. We got 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8. So 1 minus 2 minus 8. That's negative 9. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, negative 2, negative 4, so on to negative 10. So that would put my 1, negative 9 right there. Vertex. All right, everything's labeled. Here we go, next one. Okay, to complete the table for the following polynomial, then sketch the graph of the function. Uh, I'll do the first one, and then you know you can. Then I'm going to fill them in and save us all time. Um, so, negative two cubed minus three times negative two squared minus two times negative two plus 1. This is negative 8. This is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. This is negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 plus 1. 
Uh, let's see, this is negative 20 plus 5, negative 15. Negative 15. I'm just going to go ahead and fill these in. All right, so they're filled in. Now we're going to plot these points. Um, this goes, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It wasn't too bad to go just off the graph. Rather than change the scale of the y-axis, it just kind of went down a few more. Uh, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 7, 7, and 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. It was fun just watching a guy uh, count to himself and then. So uh, now we need to connect the dots. I just used air quotes there. We're not really connecting the dots. We're making a guess as to where the other points would be uh, if we were to plot them, right? And so if I were to go between negative 2 and negative 1 and plug in things like negative 1.9 and negative 1.5 and negative 1.1, where do I think all these points would land? I think they would probably land somewhere like this. And I think the points in between these two points would go something like this. And the points in between these points would go something like this. And I kind of feel like I'd get some more points down here before we come back up to this guy here, right? So I feel like all the points, once they all meld together, ooh, oh boy, would look like this. So I think it would look something like that. That's a good graph. Good job. Um, so these are the functions. Let's combine the functions. We have h of x is 3x minus 2 minus f of x is x squared plus 3x minus 1. Make sure that minus goes to the whole function. Right? Distribute that negative. So 3x minus 2 minus x squared minus 3x minus negative 1, which is plus 1. So 3x minus 3x is 0. We got a negative x squared there. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. There we go. Uh, g of x times h of x times k of x. Uh, g of x is x plus 1. h of x is 3x plus 2. Sorry, minus 2. And k of x is 4x plus 7. So we multiply everything together. Mm, I'm going to go ahead and multiply these together first for no reason. Uh, so we get 12x squared. I'm going to go ahead and figure that I get a 21x and a negative 8x. So that's plus 13x. 21x minus 8x. Uh, and then negative 2 times 7, negative 14. Next, I'm going to multiply these guys together. I get an x cubed. I'll just go ahead and distribute it to each individual thing. x cubed plus 13x squared minus 14x. Now distribute the 1. Plus 12x squared plus 13x minus 14. And combine like terms. x cubed. Got a squared and a squared there. So plus uh, 20... What am I? 20, no, hell, hold on now. Uh, 25 x squared uh, minus x and minus 14. That is it. OK, x plus 2 is a factor of this, and we want to factor it completely. To start, let's get that factor of x plus 2 out of there, just right out of there. Okay, How do we do that? It depends on your style. Okay, What do you like? Some people like this grid thing. I've seen that being used, people being successful with it. Keep it up. Uh, I've seen long division. That's what I use. It's pretty standard. Um, I see uh, common sense style, what I like to call common sense style. x plus 2 times some polynomial needs to give me this, and just kind of figure it out as you go. I will go ahead and use the long division, just because it's standard. Like if I'm in a calculus class and I'm teaching them and we need to do some division, I do long division, which is pretty standard. If you go into a college course, they're going to show you long division. Let's just pretend that looks okay. So we're going to divide. Uh, 
Uh, all right, so uh, we're going to divide 6x cubed plus 5x squared minus 17x minus 6 by x plus 2. Uh, so as I go, right, we, we're trying to build a polynomial up here that will distribute into x plus 2 uh, and make this polynomial here. Uh, so first off, I'm going to have to distribute something. Uh, I'm going to have to distribute something to the x to get 6x cubed. So that would be 6x squared. Uh, so 6x squared times x is 6x to the third. 6x squared times 2 is 12 x squared. Uh, we subtract 0 there. 5x squared minus 12x squared is negative 7x squared. Uh, then what we'll multiply by x to give you negative 7x squared. Negative 7x times negative, negative 7x times x is negative 7x squared. Uh, we'll bring down this negative 17x. Negative 7 times 2 is negative 14x subtract, and we get negative 3x. What multiplies by x to give negative 3x? Negative 3 does. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 compared to negative 6. Exactly what we want to come out with. If we subtract, we'll get a remainder of 0. So, so far we have x plus 2 times 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. But you'll notice it does not say factor out x plus 2. It says factor completely, completely, which means we have to factor this as well, if possible, which it is. How do we factor it? I like to factor by grouping. 6 times negative 3, negative 18. What multiplies the negative 18 adds to negative 7? How about negative 9 and 2? So 6x squared minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. Group. 3x times x squared minus 3, 2x squared minus 3. Uh, and these guys have a 1 in common, so 1 times uh, 2x minus 3 squared. No, 2x, not squared. 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3, 2x minus 3, x plus 2, uh, 2x minus 3 times um, let's make sure I got this right 2x okay times uh, 3x plus 1 there we go it's factored completely so you just slide that over there and that is the fully factored form back to the polynomial completely hint it's in quadratic form what does that mean so it means I try treat x to the fourth like it's x squared, and x squared like it's just x, right? So I should be able to factor it as like x squared and x squared plus something plus something, just like I would if it was just x squared here and these were x's. Uh, but first, I'll factor out a 5, because that'll be really helpful. We'll get x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 3. So that puts a 5 out here, x squared, x squared, what multiplies the negative 3 and adds to positive 2? How about 3 and negative 1? Um, mm -hmm, that works. Um, so we have 5 times x squared plus 3, which is not factorable, times x squared minus 1, which is factorable. It's a difference of squares, so x plus 1 times x minus 1 is what that gives us. Okay, so this is the one that I told you was a mistake. That is not what the equation should be. It should be uh, 2x cubed minus 11x squared plus 2x plus 15 equals 0. All right, uh, so since 5 is a solution to this, what do I do with that? Well, we've been solving these things by factoring, right? So I want to factor out a factor. If x equals 5 is a solution to this equation, then x minus 5 must be a factor to this polynomial. So we factor it out. I'll again use long division. All right, so get started with 2x squared. 
two x times negative five is negative ten x squared. If you subtract, we get negative x squared. So I'm going to multiply by negative x. Gives me negative x squared. Bring down that two x. Negative x times negative five is five x. Subtract, we get negative three x. I will bring down that plus fifteen. Multiply x by negative three to get negative three x. Negative three times negative five is positive fifteen. Just like we wanted, if we subtract, we get a zero remainder. Perfect. Then we have x minus five times two x squared minus x minus three equals zero. Uh, what do we do with that? Well, we set x plus five equal to zero and x equals five, okay. That was a given. Now we factor this, uh, which is not too hard. We'll just kind of do it uh, guess and check style. Um, I know it's got to be 2x times x. Give me 2x squared. Then I need two numbers that multiply to negative 3. And then it all has to multiply out, so this is negative 1. So I think uh, negative 3 and a positive 1. Wait, whoops, negative 3 and a positive 1. Negative 3x, positive 2x, that adds up to negative x. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, so that works out. 2x minus 3 must be equal to 0. And x equals negative 1. So 3 halves and negative 1 are the other solutions. Uh, OK, so now I'm given an x-intercept. Notice how. I give you the same kind of information in lots of different ways. x plus 2 is a factor. Um, that's kind of out of place almost. 5 is a solution. Negative 1 is an x-intercept, right? Which means that if I plug in negative 1, I should get 0, right? So uh, it must be that x plus 1 is a factor of this polynomial, meaning x plus 1 times something. Uh, if I set it equal to 0, x plus 1 equals 0 gives me x equals negative 1 is a x intercept. So I'm going to figure out what this guy is. Uh, and so we'll use long division again, x plus 1. Or you know what, how about we'll use uh, synthetic division. When I divide by x plus 1 or x minus 2 or x something, I can use synthetic division. I put a negative 1 there. Um, and then I put my 1 negative 2, negative 5, and negative 6. Bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. You got negative 3, you got positive 3, negative 2. Um, negative 1, negative 3, positive 3, negative 2. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting. that This is the one that I said <coughs> was off. It should have been plus 2x to the third, but I didn't catch it in time to, or 2x squared. I didn't catch it in time to tell everybody that that was the case. People were finding that there were remainders, which they're absolutely right about. There's a remainder of negative 4. But if I saw that you tried this, that was the thing, uh, then it was an extra credit point. Um, so that's that. If you did a plus 2x, this would all be a different story. Uh, but typo. So we move on from there. We're going to do this division. x minus 4. We're going to, I don't know why I put parentheses on it. doesn't matter. We're going to find a remainder here. Exercise and finding a remainder. Here we go. 4x to the third. Multiply that by x, you get 4x to the fourth. Multiply that by negative 4, you get negative 16x to the third. Subtract, you get 0. We get positive 4x cubed. And bring down that negative 48x. We're going to have to multiply x by 4x squared. 4x squared times x, 4x to the third. 4 times 4, negative 16x. Uh, oh, there's a squared there, so we're going to have to first lock this page so it doesn't move and then move this let's go down there there we go move this over move this over actually just delete that we don't need that yet right we need to put a 0x squared there 
because negative, sorry, four x squared times negative four gives us negative 16 x squared. And the x squareds do we want to get? We don't want to get any x squareds. So negative, negative 16 x squared is 16 x squared. Uh, so we're going to multiply by 16 x. 16 x times x is 16 x squared. 16 x times negative four is negative 64 x. Bring down the negative 48 x, subtract. We get 16 x. Um, so we put a 16 there, 16 times x is 16 x. 16 times negative four is negative 64, but we wanna get negative 60, so we are off by four. A four that we can't possibly get, because anything we put here, we'd have to multiply by x, and we can't get a four when we multiply by x. So we get the remainder of four over x minus four. So this is what I would put right there. I just take that, put that right there. Um, giving you this polynomial, I'm saying that this is a zero. So I've told you things like uh, this is a factor, this is a solution to this equation, this is an x-intercept, and now I'm saying this is a zero, right? Which means that x plus one must be a factor. Uh, so uh, let's do mm, the synthetic division. Okay, put negative one there. I'll do two and negative 11 and 2 and 15. Bring down the 2, negative 2, negative uh, 13, uh, 13, 15, negative 15, 0. So uh, we are currently at this point x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 13x plus 15. Uh, we can factor by grouping. We get 30, what do we do? 2 times 15, two numbers that multiply to 30 and add to negative 13. How about negative 10 and negative 3? So we have x plus 1 times 2x squared minus 10x minus 30x plus 15. x plus 1. Uh, we got a 2x in common here. 2x times x minus 2, sorry, 5, x minus 5. Here we have a negative 3 in common, x minus 5. So x plus 1 times x minus 5 times 2x minus 3. Uh, we'll find the other zeros is what we're doing. So we'll set this equal to 0. And we set this equal to 0, we get x equals negative 1. Set this equal to 0, we get x equals 5. Set this equal to 0, we get 3 halves. Uh, factor this polynomial completely. We have four terms. We're, we're not doing the rational zero theorem here, right? Because this is pre predates that. So how about grouping? We have an x squared in common, 2x plus 1. We have a negative 9 in common, 2x plus 1 is left. So we get 2x plus 1 times x squared minus 9. Always remember to check and see, can I factor what I have left? Can't factor this. But this is a difference of squares. So x plus 3 times x minus 3. And those are the answers, so don't really need that. Um, that's it. That's everything. Um, thanks for watching. If there's any questions that you have at all, then uh, please let me know. Remember that this is out of the quest. It's worth one. Uh, extra credit point if I saw this going on, and uh, this number 11, uh, you were told how to fix that during class. So that is all. Um, thanks for watching.